In the last video, we used the concept of a rate of spontaneous emission to estimate the average lifetime of excited states. Uh, we can, in addition, use this expression for the rate of spontaneous emission to come up with rules for the types of transitions that are allowed in atomic systems. Specifically, uh, for uh, the case of example hydrogen, we would in general need to evaluate matrix elements of this form to estimate the rate of transition be between a state with quantum numbers n, l, and m, l, and another state with numbers n prime, l prime, and m, l prime. In particular, if this matrix element is equal to zero, then the rate of spontaneous emission is equal to zero. And this means that there's, uh, in general, no transition between these two states. Uh, this is in the case of uh, what's known as dipole transitions. There are other types of transitions allowed. You can have a magnetic, I guess this would be electric dipole transition. You can have magnetic dipole transitions and electric quadrupole transitions, which are much, much weaker and therefore much less probable and can often be ignored. And the idea then is to establish some rules to know in advance when this matrix element will be zero. And we won't go through the details, but in general, this matrix element is not equal to zero when delta M, which uh, ML, which we're defining by ML prime minus ML. So the change in the magnetic quantum number uh, in the transition is either equal to zero or equal to plus or minus one. If this condition is not satisfied for the transition we're studying, then uh, that transition is dipole forbidden. Okay, so there is no dipole transition between those two states. There's a second condition that says that delta L, which we'll define as L prime minus L, has to be equal to plus or minus one. These two conditions have to be satisfied uh, for this transition to be allowed. And these are known as the selection rules. Notice that even in cases where these selection rules are satisfied, the uh, matrix element of the dipole moment may still be zero in some cases due to some other mechanism. But in general, uh, there's always the possibility of these transitions uh, satisfying these rules to be allowed. So if we apply this to the case of the hydrogen atom for the first four uh, principal energy levels, we'll, we'll look at the core structure. We won't look at the fine structure for now. We have L1, L2 and L3. Okay, so these are the possible energy levels uh, for the coarse structure of hydrogen. Okay, and we can draw out the different decay paths available for the excited states. This is the ground state, so it can't go anywhere. 
uh, from this state, we can decay down to this state because L changes by minus one. This state can't go anywhere. It can't go, the only choice it has for a lower energy level is over here, but uh, the change in the orbital angular momentum doesn't satisfy our selection rules. If we look at this state now, this state is allowed to transition over here because uh, the change in the orbital angular momentum satisfies our selection rule. And this isn't a lower energy state. This state over here can transition to this state uh, because delta L changes by one. and to this state. We're not focusing too much on the uh, magnetic quantum numbers on the MLs. These are part of, uh, in the core structure, they're degenerate, but in general, uh, they can only change by zero or plus or minus one. So within these, there's uh, sub levels that we could also draw arrows to. If we look at this state now, this state can only decay down to this one. It can't go over here because that would require L to change by two, which doesn't satisfy our selection rules. Likewise, this state can only decay down here. That's the only choice it has. The N equals four, L equals two states. This one can decay down here because it changes L by one and it's a lower energy level. And same thing for this one. This energy level, it can decay here where L changes by plus one, or it can decay over here where L changes by minus one. It can decay down here because then the Ls wouldn't change. And finally, this state can only decay down to this one. Okay, so it's a little crowded, uh, but these these are the allowed transitions for uh, the coarse structure of hydrogen according to our selection rules. This also illustrates the concept of multiple decay pathways. For example, if you were to estimate the lifetime of this state, we would need to calculate the rate of spontaneous emission uh, from this state to this state and from this state down to this state. Add those up and calculate the lifetime uh, based on that result. I'll also quickly note that while this state can't technically decay any further by a dipole transition, an electric dipole transition, there are other mechanisms that would let it decay uh, in longer time scale. So this is known as a metastable state. Uh, which can still decay, for example, by colliding with another atom or by multi-photon emission, which is a, a higher order decay process um, than the dipole transition.